да. I need to wear this microphone thing. You need to wear this. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillahi na ahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billah wa na'udhu billah min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina wa yahdihi allahu fala mubillala wa ma yudlil fala hadiya lah. فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له فأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله نعم so we begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى for his many favors upon us and thanking Allah تعالى for the guidance of Islam and دعوة السلفية and sending the صلاة and the سلام upon the messenger of Allah عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم and then we like to thank the brothers and sisters here in this community for having a good thought about us and inviting us down here. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala place in your scale of good deeds and Yom Qiyam. So, are we going to get right into it? Because um, it's going to get late, and so this is very important information that we have to mention tonight, so I need you to take notes. If you don't have any pens, then borrow a pen, and need you to take notes from this information. So, like the first thing that I want you to write down is two very important books that you have to get your hands on. The, the first book is Means to a Happy Family Life. Means to a Happy Family Life. And the second book is Hakul Zojain, The Rights of the Spouses. Both of these books have been authored by Sheikh Suleiman al ruhaili Sheikh Suleiman al ruhaili And both of these books are in English. Both of these books have been translated into the English language so you can get your hands on these books. These books are very important for um, trying to establish a family. Nam. so today we want to mention something very important because if you notice, Akhwan Akhawat, that when the brothers and sisters have the what we know as the sit down, the proposal to try to get married, people don't necessarily ask the right questions and people necessarily don't know what to ask. And one of the issues is that when the people get married, and the wife doesn't know what rights the husband is due, then how is she going to give him his rights? And when the husband does not know what rights his <coughs> wife is due, how is he going to give her her rights? So the man needs to know the rights that he is due, so he doesn't expect something that is not due of him. And so he can also train his daughter on what she is expected to do when she gets married. And the wife needs to know the rights that Allah Ta'ala has obligated upon her, and the rights that she is due from her husband. So tonight, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to mention the rights of the husband. And tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to mention the rights of the wife, okay? And so we need, so tonight we mention the rights that the brothers are getting, but be sure you come back tomorrow to understand the rights that your wife is due, right? This is important that if you're married, if you're not married, if you are divorced, it's still important, okay? So you want to get nine rights today. That the man is due from the wife, okay? Nine rights. And we're going to go through this and we're going to make sure that you have these down. We're going to ask you what the rights are, okay? Now, so before we mention what the rights are, and again, we are discussing the rights of who tonight? The rights of the husband. And there are how many? It mentioned this book? Nine. And the name of this book is what? The rights of the spouse, Hakul Zawjain, by Sheikh who? Sheikh Sulman Ruhayda, all right? So, before we mention the rights, he mentions why the Muslim woman is giving her husband his rights. It's important to know why are you even giving your husband his rights. Okay, so the Sheikh begins with Akul Billahi Tawfiq. He says, the Muslim woman draws closer to Allah Azza wa Jal by fulfilling the rights of her husband, which are upon her. And she anticipates the reward and a good ending from her Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, she does not give her husband his rights from this perspective of compensation. Meaning what? That if he gives me my rights, I'm going to give him his rights. This is not why she's doing it. Okay? Because if she's doing it for this reason, then what happens? If he falls short in giving her her rights, she's going to not give him some of his, his rights. 
So this is not the reason why she's giving him his rights in the first place. Rather, she is giving him his rights because Allah Ta'ala told her to. And she keeps in mind the statement of the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salaam, Inna ma alaykum ma hamiltum wa alayhim ma hummilu. That verily your responsibility is upon you and their responsibility is upon them. Okay? So she fulfills the rights of her husband, knowing that Allah Ta'ala will not lose the reward of those who do good deeds. He said this is because the Muslim woman knows that Islam has magnified the rights of the husband. And the Messenger of Allah, he said, If I were to command anyone to make sujood to anyone other than Allah, then what? I would have commanded the woman to prostrate to her husband. And the woman has not fulfilled her husband's rights until if he were to ask her of herself upon a saddle, that she would comply with the order. And so the Messenger of Allah, he said, you, he said, a woman will not find the sweetness of faith until she fulfills the rights of her husband. He said, therefore, the path to find the sweetness of faith for the Muslim woman is to fulfill the rights of her husband. And, and he said, alayhi salam, <coughs> the woman will not fulfill the rights of Allah until she fulfills the rights of her husband. He said, so therefore the woman is dedicated to fulfilling her husband's rights and she does not deem anything to be too great. She said, because he knows the tremendous statement of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salam, the statement that he just mentioned, if I were to order anyone to prostrate to anyone other than Allah, I would have ordered the woman to prostrate to her husband. This is due to the tremendous rights that he has over her. He said, so the righteous Muslim woman, when she fulfills the rights of her husband, she does not think she's doing him a favor. She does not think she's doing him a favor. But she knows the virtue that her husband has over her. And she is... Um, Complying her religion. He said. Nah. So. And she doesn't listen to. The whispers of the shaitan. She doesn't listen to the whispers of the shaitan. Who come and tell her. That she is what? Oppressed. Because she knows that Islam has came. As a mercy for her. Nah. He said. And the righteous Muslim woman. Is not a lackey in her home. But rather she has a status and position in her home. And she is the guardian of her home, as the Messenger of Allah said, al al mur'atu ra'iyah. That the woman is a shepherd in, her, in the home of her husband. And she is responsible for her flock. Nine. So, the first right that we're going to mention, and this is going to be right number one. Right? So, right number one. That is, and to tiyahu fi ghayri ma'siyatillah, that she obey him in other than disobedience to Allah, that she obey her husband in anything that is not haram. He said, therefore, the blessed, righteous wife obeys her husband if he gives her a command, hoping to receive the reward from Allah Ta'ala and hoping to enter the paradise that her Lord has prepared for her, that paradise that no eye has seen the like of and no ear has heard the like of and has never even crossed the heart of a person. And there is a hadith, ya akhawat, that the Messenger of Allah mentioned that every woman has to put on her wall. He said, إِذَا صَلَّتْ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا That if the woman prays her five daily prayers, وَصَامَتْ شَحْرَهَا And she fasts her month, meaning the month of Ramadan. Naam? And she guards her chastity. Naam? وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا And she obeys her husband. قِيلَ لَهَا أُخْلِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبَوَابِ شِئْ it will be said to her, enter paradise from any door that you desire. He says, and the woman, she fears from the anger of her Lord and the punishment if she disobeys her husband. Because the message of Allah, Islam, he said, Ashaddu nas adab al-yawm al-qiyamah, if the name. He said, there will be two people on the day of judgment 
who shall be the most severely punished. Right? And he said, a woman who disobeys her husband, and wa imam wa imam wa hum lahu karihun, and a person who has been placed as the imam of a people while they hate him. Nam. He says, so the Muslim woman she devotes herself to obeying her husband, and she fears disobeying him, and she wants the reward from Allah Taala by obeying him, and she fears her punishment. But at the same time, if he orders her to do something haram, does she obey him? She doesn't obey him. Nam. And the Sheikh he gave some examples. Sheikh Suleiman Rahil. He says, so if the man, for example, orders his wife to beautify herself in a way that's not permissible, such as plucking her eyebrows. He says, because some of the women, he said, they call me up. And they say, oh, Sheikh, my husband said to me, you know, your eyebrows are too long. You need to pluck your eyebrows. He said, and my husband said to me, you need a hair weave. He said, and so, Sheikh, you know, the rights of the husbands are great. So what should I do? And the Sheikh, he said, let me tell you a story to tell you what to do. He said, a woman came to the Messenger of Allah Islam, and she mentioned that she had married her daughter off to a man. Meaning that her daughter had gotten married to a man. And the, and the hair on her daughter's head had been pulled out. And so the husband has ordered her to put a hair weave in her hair. And so this woman went to the Prophet Muhammad Islam and asked him what should she do. And he said, those who add extensions to their hair are what? Are cursed. And he said, There is no obedience to the creation while disobeying the creator. Okay? Now, he said, so, now, so the woman only obeys him and that which is right and correct. Now, the second right, what was the first right? To obey him in what? In ma'roof, and that which is correct. Okay? The second right, he said, is that the woman should thank her husband and show him gratitude for what he does for her. She should thank him. And he mentioned the narration from the Messenger of Allah He said, Allah does not look at the woman who does not show gratitude or thank her husband while she cannot manage without him. Allah does not look at the woman who does not show gratitude to her husband while she is not able to manage without him. He says, so therefore the righteous, blessed woman, she fears being ungrateful towards her companion. And she, cultiv and she cultivates herself. And she blames and criticizes herself if she ever is ungrateful towards the companionship of her husband. He said, why is that? He said, because the Messenger of Allah, he said, I was shown the hellfire. And I have not seen anything so horrific. And I saw أكثر أحليها النساء and the, and the most of the inhabitants of the hellfire were who? They were the women. And so the Sahabiyat, because they feared Allah Ta'ala, and they understood that when you hear the hellfire, there is no hellfire for the man and a separate hellfire for the woman. There isn't an, an easy hellfire for the woman. It's all the same, according to the sin that the person does. So the Sahabiyat, they said, they, they wanted to know, why, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, by the kufr. And they said, do they disbelieve? Because the word kufr means, it means two things. What? Right? It means to disbelieve and it means to show ungratitude. They said, what, did they have kufr towards Allah Azza wa Jal? He said, no, but rather they have ungratefulness towards their companions, meaning their husbands. And they, he said, and if one of them, meaning their husbands, were to be kind to their wives their entire life, and then she sees one undesirable thing from him, she will say, I have never seen any good from you ever. You've never done me any good. Based upon one thing. Now, so what's the first right? Obedience in the good. What's the second right? Showing gratitude. The third right is that she is diligent in not becoming angry with him and not making him angry with her. She is diligent in not becoming angry or upset with him and not letting him become angry or upset with her. This is the third right. He said, and if she becomes angry with him or if he makes her angry, then she returns to him 
and she tries to please him. And then he mentioned the narration of the Messenger of Allah salam, that he said, Your women of paradise, they are the loving, childbearing women, those who return to their husbands, those whom if they cause harm, meaning if she harms her husband, or if her husband harms her. And another narration, it mentions that if she becomes angry or if she makes him angry, then she places her hand in his hand. And she says, I will not taste sleep until you are pleased with me. She refuses to go to sleep until her husband is happy with her. Now, she says, so the righteous, blessed wife, she avoids causing her husband to become angry because she knows that the messenger of Allah, he said, there are three people, three types of people, and their prayer will not go past their ears. He said, the runaway slave until he returns. And a woman who passes the night while her husband is angry with her. And, and a person who has been made the imam of the people while they hate him. He says, so the blessed woman, if she becomes angry with her husband, she does not boycott him. And she never abandons his bed. Even if she is angry, because she knows that the Messenger of Allah, Islam, he said, if a woman passes the night while she is boycotting her husband's bed, the angels curse her until the morning comes or until she returns to the bed. The Sheikh says, so where are the women in this era who are like this? He said, because you have women today, and if they become angry with their husband, they grab their purse, and they leave the house, and they go back to their family's home. He said, and what do you think happens when this woman gets mad with her husband, takes her purse, and goes to her mother's house? You think her mother sends her back? He said, the family, they support her, and they block the husband from getting her back. And they prevent him from his rights. And they don't encourage the woman, go back to your husband. Now, he said, and they don't reprimand her. He said, is this not abandoning the bed of the husband? He said, well, Wahi, she has abandoned his bed. The woman that leaves the home like this, she has abandoned the bed of her husband. And he said that the Messenger of Allah, Islam, he said that if a man calls his wife to bed and she refuses to go to bed, and he passes the night angry with her, the angels curse her until the morning. Ya Juan, what does the curse? When you hear the word, because in Arabic language there are many different words that we all translate as curse, right? You have the sub, you have the la'an. You know what the la'an means? You, you might know what this word means. It's translated as curse, the la'an. It means to be far removed from the mercy of Allah. May Allah Ta'ala save us from that. Now, what was the first word, Ya Juan? To be obedient. Second right? To show gratitude. Third right? To avoid making him angry. We go move on to the fourth right, right? Said the fourth right that the husband has is for the wife to show love and mercy to him. That the wife should show him, she should be affectionate with her husband and show him mercy. And then he mentioned the verse. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْفُسُكُمْ أَزْوَاجٍ لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مُوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا And from his signs that he has created from your own souls, spouses, that you may live with them in peace and harmony. And he has placed between you and them affection and mercy. <coughs> he said, therefore, the blessed woman, she is affectionate with her husband. And with how? With her tongue, that she, with her tongue. She speaks to him in an affectionate way. And listen to this, sisters. He said, even if she has to exaggerate and lie to make him happy. Even if she has to go overboard and exaggerate and lie to make him happy. He said, and the Messenger of Allah has permitted lying when a man lies to his wife or if a wife lies to a husband. He said, so there's no problem with a woman lying to her husband and saying that she really loves him more than she really does. She can lie and say that she loves him, although that love may not really be in her heart. And she can say things that he would love to hear, even if she knows she's lying is permissible in this situation. Now, he said, and the righteous wife is affectionate to her husband by having a good appearance in front of him. And then he mentioned the hadith, when they asked him about the best woman, he said, those who... Those who obey you when you command them, and they make you happy when you look at them. 
Nam. He said, so she does not let her husband hear that thing which will harm him, or she does not show him that thing which will harm him. He said, the righteous woman, she is afraid of harming her husband with a word or a look or asking for something that may harm him or for showing him a bad appearance. And he explained why. He said, the messenger of Allah, he said, there is no woman that harms her husband in this world except that his wife from the Hurin, they say, do not offend him. May Allah fight you. Verily, he is only with you for a short time, and he is going to leave you, and he's coming to us. This is what the woman from the Hurin say when the wives in this life harm their husband. Naam, what right are we on now, Yahuwah? Well, number five. He said, from the rights of the husband is that the wife preserve his honor by guarding herself. By guarding herself. Naam. He said, the Messenger of Allah, he said, the best women are those who they obey you if you command them, and they please you when you look at them, and they preserve their selves, and they preserve your wealth. Naam. <coughs> and he said, any woman who takes off her clothes anywhere but her husband's house has torn the veil that's between her and Allah. The Sheikh explains, he said, <coughs> he said, the woman is prohibited from taking her clothes off in anywhere except for her husband's home or that place that takes the place of his home, meaning like his parents' home or any place that he has given her permission to do so. He said, but if she does, if she takes her, her clothing off in a place that he has not given her permission to do so, then she has torn down the veil between her and Allah. And he mentioned Yaqwan a hadith from the Messenger of Allah Islam. He said, Thalatha la tas al anhum. He said, there are three types of people. Don't even ask about them. What does this mean? He said, their, their sin is so great, don't even ask about these three types of people. He said, there are a man who leaves the jama'at, the main body of Muslims, and he disobeys the ruler and dies while being disobedient. Number two is a runaway slave, and he dies while being a runaway slave. And number three is a woman whose husband is absent, and he left her with all her worldly needs, and when he left, she made a wanton display of herself as she wanders about. When the man leaves, then she shows herself in a way that's not permissible. He said, this is a woman who her husband may go away for business, or he may travel to another land. He said, and why did the husband travel? He traveled to get money to take care of her. He traveled to get provisions for her. And once he leaves, she begins to show her beauty to unrelated men. And she wanders about. He said, this is betrayal. He said, verily, this is a major sin because she did not protect the right of her husband. He said, so the righteous wife is diligent in protecting her husband and not exposing him to fitna, even with one word. Now, the Sheikh Yahuan, he mentions a tremendous benefit here, right? About how the wife should not expose her husband to fitna. And we need to make sure that the women pay attention to this, right? How the woman should not expose her husband to fitna. He said that the Messenger of Allah, and he, he said, let no woman touch, let to bash him. Let no woman touch or look at another woman so as to describe the details of her figure to her husband as though he is looking at her. Right? And, and the women, they do this. They'll speak about their friend, or she has nice hair, she has long hair, she's beautiful. And they're talking to their husband. This is not permissible, Yahshua. But the Sheikh mentions something that the women do which is worse than that. What do you think it is, Yahshua? That what's even worse than describing them? That cell phone, Yahuwah, is a musibah. That cell phone is that cell phone is a calamity, Yahuwah. The Sheikh he says that you'll find women, and they'll take the pictures of their friends, and they'll put the pictures around the house. Or they'll take a picture of their friend and they'll show it to their husband. He says, so you have disgraced the honor of your friend, and you put your husband in fitna. And then you're going to be surprised when your husband wants to take a second wife. And who is it? 
to one on the picture. <laughs> and everybody's shocked. Now you feel that your, your friend betrayed you. No, you show your husband your friend. You describe her, and now he fell in love with her. Now, he said, so, he, and, and, and smile then, Yahweh. He said, and also, the way that the woman is prohibited from exposing her husband to fitna, he said, the woman exposed the husband to fitna when they asked him to bring the satellite dish in the home. You ask your husband to bring the satellite dish in the home so he can look at these women. So you can look at these women on the TV. And you can look at the man on the TV. And as a footnote, Yaquan, one of the he made a very good point, right? And let me ask the, the brothers here a question. We know everyone has their manner with them. Which brother here would allow another man to come in his home wearing some boxer briefs no shirt, sit on his couch and have a conversation with his wife. Would anybody do that? Most men themselves, you're going to be too shy to walk around the house in front of your wife and daughter and, and dress like that yourself. He said, but at the same time, men would turn on the TV and watch wrestling. What are those men wearing when they wrestle? Trunks. Tight trunks. And you sit there with your wife and she's looking at this Man who his whole duty is to lift weights and take steroids and he's wearing some trunks and you're sitting there with your wife while she's looking at the man in trunks. And that's okay with people. Where's the Hayat? And the, the man's going to look at the woman wrestling and the wife sitting right there and everybody's okay with that. SubhanAllah. Now, what right was that, Yaquan? That was five? What was the first one? What was the second one? Third one? Uh-oh. What was the fourth one? What was the fifth one? What was the sixth one? Uh, okay. <laughs> Make sure y'all paying attention, brother. That she safeguard his secrets. That she safeguard the secrets of the home. He said, and she does not speak about that which the door has been closed upon. He said, especially that which was concerns intimacy. She can't speak about this to her mother, her sister, her friends, relatives, anyone. The messenger of Allah, salam, Yaquan, he was in front of the campaigns one day and he said, is it possible for a woman to inform the people of what her husband does when he is alone with her? Is it possible for a man to inform the people of what he does when he is along with his family. And the woman stood up and she said, I swear by Allah, verily the men do this. And verily the women do this. And, he's, and, and he said, don't do this. Shall I inform you what the like of this is? The example of this is of a male devil who meets a female devil in the street. And they are intimate together while the people watch. This is when a, when a man is intimate with his wife or wife is intimate with her husband and they go and speak about intimacy to other people. Haram, Yaquan. You can't do that. And this is another reason that will make the people become interested in your spouse. Now, <clears throat> and he mentioned the narration from the Messenger of Allah, which has been collected in Sahih Muslim. He said that from the most evil people before Allah Ta'ala on the day of resurrection will be a man who is intimate with his wife and she is intimate with him, and then they go spread the secrets of the home. <clears throat> what number was that? How many do we have left? Three. MashaAllah. So this is number seven. Number seven, Yaquan. Now, number seven is that she protect his home. She protect his home, right? Sheikh Suleiman Rahid, may Allah Ta'ala preserve him. He said, from the rights of the husband upon his wife is that she protect his home and she does not allow anyone to enter his home that he does not want to enter his home. And then he mentioned the narration from the Messenger of Allah, he said, and from your rights over them is that she should not allow anyone to sit on your furniture that you don't like. Okay? So the man has a right to decide who enters his home. 
and, and, and he mentioned the hadith that he said from from your rights that you have upon your woman that you should not that you sh- that you should not that they should not allow anyone to sit on your friendship that you dislike, and they should not allow anyone in your home that you dislike. All right. <coughs> what number are we on now? Number eight. Number eight from the rights that the husband has upon his wife is that she protect his wealth. Now there's a distinction between his wealth and her wealth. We're talking about his wealth, right? Because sometimes men, they give their woman an allowance or whatever. She has to protect his wealth, all right? Now, and the Messenger of Allah, alayhi wa sallam, when speaking about the best woman, it was Mr. Hadith, he said, تحفظو في نفسها وماليه That she preserves herself and his wealth. Now, <clears throat> And he mentioned the hadith that the Messenger of Allah said, It is not permissible for a woman to give anything from her husband's wealth except with his permission. Okay? So if he allows her to spend it, then there's no harm in that. Now the Sheikh, as a footnote here, he mentions three different scenarios as it relates to the woman spending the wealth of her husband. Right? We're speaking about his wealth. We mentioned um, today in Juma, but at the, at the Mufti, Sheikh Abdul Aziz mentioned about her wealth and that the man can't oppress her with her wealth. Her wealth. Then we're speaking about his wealth, okay? He said, so you have three different scenarios. The first scenario is the man gives his wife permission to spend for a particular situation. In this case, the wife receives the full reward and he also receives the full reward without decreasing the reward of any of them. Okay, that's the first scenario. The second scenario is the man give his, gives his wife General permission to spend from his wealth. General permission. In this scenario, she receives half the reward and he receives half the reward. And the third scenario, the man does not give his wife permission to spend his wealth. In this case, if she spends it anyway, meaning she spends some from his wealth, then the sin will be upon her and he shall get the reward. Now, which one is this right here, Yaquan? The, okay, that was eight. And now we're on what? Nine. That she should not fast without his permission. He said, so therefore the righteous, blessed woman who has knowledge of the rights of her husband, that she is not going to fast without his permission. Then she mentioned the narration of the Prophet Muhammad Islam. He said it's not permissible for the woman to fast while her husband is present except with his permission. Of course, so what kind of fast, Shaquan? The optional fast. Not the obligatory fast, but the optional fast, okay? Now, so the sheikh, he closes out Ya'akhwan with some tremendous advice. He says, so therefore, so we have all nine rights, right? Let's do a recap right quick, and we're going to close with the final advice. What was the first one? Second one? Third one? Fourth one? Fifth? Six, six, seven, eight, and nine. Listen to what the Sheikh says. That one. He said, "The blessed, righteous woman who has knowledge of her husband's rights, she forgives her husband if he falls short, and she turns a blind eye to his lapses, and she honors his family. She cleans his home, she washes his clothes, she cooks his food." And if he comes close to her, she comes close to him. She protects his nose and his ears. How does she protect his nose, Yaqwan? She keeps herself smelling clean and nice. How does she protect his ears? She doesn't say anything except that which is good. He said, therefore, when he looks at her, she is beautified. And she pays attention to his meals time, to the time of his meals. And when he comes home, his home is a home of ease. Yaqwan. Please, go and listen. There's a nice benefit. You can find it on the website of our brothers in Troy. You know our brothers in Troy. Uh, may Allah preserve them. They have, there's a lecture about the story of Um Sulaim. Then the woman needs to listen to that, Yaquan. It's about how the woman should deal with her husband when he comes home from work. Right? <coughs> now, he said, so if she is angry, she does not stop speaking to him. And she Listen to the statement of the wise person where they said, If you pardon me, you will cause my affection to last. Don't, don't speak about my 
tantrums when I become angry. And don't tap me as you would tap a, a drum, even once. Because verily, you do not know what's inside of it. And don't complain a lot because you will go away from me like the wind. And my heart will refuse you. Because the hearts, they fluctuate. He said, verily, I saw love in the heart and I saw harm. And if they are gathered together, the love is going to go away. He said, so this, this is Islamic guidance for the woman towards her husband. He said, the woman has to, if the woman follows this advice, then the homes will be happy. He said, but some of the women today don't know these rights. Therefore, there is an increase in divorce and separation. He said, and today we hear about women who they are heedless of being gentle. And they have forgot about being feminine. They forgot about being a woman. Now, he said, therefore, the woman transforms into an arrogant brute. He said, and she rules over a weak husband and dominates him. And if she gives him something from her wealth, then she's doing him a favor. Like Sheikh Abdulaziz the Mufti, he said, some women, they belittle their husbands because she has a good job and she makes a lot of money. And maybe the man only makes six or seven dollars an hour. So she belittles him. He said, this is oppression to belittle your man because you make more than him. Now, the Sheikh continues. He says, so she belittles him for being in poverty and being weak. And she insults him and she frowns in his face. He, he said, so when the husband enters the home, she frowns in his face. And when he leaves the home, she pushes him in the back. He said, He said, her husband does not feel her eyes, and her soul is not content with him. And it shows in every door and every window. He said, she reveals her face to, to men who are, who are not related to her. And when she speaks, she says, well, so-and-so's husband did this for her. And so-and-so's husband did that for her. And I'm unfortunate because all these good men proposed to me, and I'm stuck with you. All these good men asked me for my hand and mashallah, look what I got. Now, he says, and if she remains in the home with her husband, she sees herself as a prisoner. But when she goes outside, Ya Khwan, how many men have complained about this? He said, but when she goes outside the home, she does what? When she's inside the home, she's wearing tube socks, gym pants. But when she goes outside, she beautifies herself. And she perfumes herself. But when a husband looks at her, he's harmed. But when he sees her hair disheveled, clothes are splattered with filth, and she stays home dirty and unkept. But when she goes out, she beautifies herself. He said, this is the wretched woman. The one who presents the best to the people and the worst to her husband. When she goes out to her friends, she is smiling and has sweet speech. And she is the life of the party, so to speak. And she's never boring when she's with her friends. But when she returns to the house, Kenneth, I see she's a lion. When she returns to the home, she's a lion. When she speaks, fire comes out of her mouth. And when she acts, she's never dignified. He says, she is no good to this man. And she is a wretched woman. He says, so where does she expect to find happiness from? Because she has opposed her religion angered her Lord, and made her husband miserable. He says, so it's upon the woman to take, a, to, um, to take account to herself because life is very short. Now, so we'll stop right here, inshallah ta'ala, and tomorrow, um, brothers, Sheikh, he mentions 12 rights, 12 that you have to give your wife, right? So make sure that you um, don't just take half of the equation, but you come back to get the other half of the equation. Now, what time tomorrow, inshallah, is the class? After Isha, inshallah. Now, and there are also um, rights that the Sheikh mentioned that, that maybe we didn't mention after Fajr. Um, that he mentioned there are rights that have to come before you get married, rights that come when you propose to a woman, and rights that come at the, the wedding ceremony. All these things have rights with them. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi Thank you.